joining me now on uh, the Bonson Group, their managing director, David Bonson. And David, so over the weekend, I'm doing some research and I saw this wonderful graphic and it shows Six Flags. The attendance of Six Flags has been a free fall from 14 million to, I don't know, just a, a handful of people. Really, I tell you, it's crazy. Here's the thing, though. The flip side of that is total spending uh, at Six Flags has gone up just tremendously as well. It's almost the exact opposite. So you just have to wonder, okay, as an investor, what does that meant for the stock? I'm going to bring up the stock price in a moment just so folks out there can see it. As you might imagine, it was near $60 back about five years ago, and it's under $30 now. So that's, that seems right. That seems like logical to me. But I look around, for instance, at Staples this last quarter. These Staples, they were posting these amazing revenue numbers, even though volume was gone down. I know you've shared some staple names with us. You're making a killing with them. But how do we, how do we figure that they can pull it off, but something like Six Flags can't? Well, because the very definition of a consumer staple is a company that makes a product people have to have, and the very definition of a consumer discretionary company is one that is in a product or service like Six Flags that people don't have to have. And your pricing power as a staple is very different. You look at the food companies, I think most of us agree, and you know, Charles, you and I both love our food, we have to have it. (laughs) You look, look at Hershey, look at General Mills. These are up over 25% over the last 12 months without a huge increase in volume, but good pricing power. The difference with the Six Flags, first of all, they did go through the COVID moment where the government shut down their business for over a year. But even when you factor out the hangover of that, it is a discretionary business. And I think that they have good pricing power that they can keep revenues up. But it's not the type of a stock we would ever buy because it's so cyclical Mm. uh, as a discretionary. But when you look at Clorox, which is one of our big winners as a consumer staple, they have pricing power because people still have to buy household cleaning products yeah we gripe about it but we're while we're standing in line to pay for it we're we're kind of you know moaning under our breath but we still stand in line and pay for it let's talk about the fed what do you you feel where are you modeling the fed's next move Yeah, I was listening to your discussion about recession with Danielle, and I'm in the camp that we're more than likely to have a recession than not, although I still think you can make a very compelling argument. It could end up being a real shallow recession. I think those that are rooting for a recession or believe the insanity that a whole lot of people have to lose their jobs in order to do something about inflation, I think they may end up being disappointed. I do think, Charles, a lot of the arguments that you're making could have been made a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. People were screaming about a recession. 18 months ago, and it still hasn't come. But I I look, I think it's more likely to come than not, because the Fed is recklessly trying to break something. It's pretty clear right now they're going to pause next week. And then if the futures are right, that they're going to resume increasing in July, we'll see how that shakes out. I just think it's insane. I think there's absolutely no reason with the amount of liquidity they've taken out and the fact that shelter adjusted CPI is maybe two and a half percent right now soaking wet. There's no reason for the Fed to not just take a victory lap on inflation, allow six months of this to play out and see where we stand. But it's almost like they're just not content that they haven't unemployed people. It's ridiculous. David, I got 30 seconds. Let me slip in this new wild card. Now that the debt ceiling drama is over, everyone's saying the Treasury's got to refill the coffers, one, one and a half trillion dollars. And that somehow is going to, you know, uh, become a major factor with the economy and the markets. You buying it? No, not at all, because (laughs) people don't understand how markets are discounting mechanisms. Every single person in the market has known that this was coming. The liquidity factors and technicalities are priced in and that those various complexities you're referring to as they reload and reliquify the treasury coffers. Everybody has seen that coming and bond yield volatility is actually lower than it had been a couple months ago, which is ironic. Yeah. Hey, David, love having you on again. We always learn something from you. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Thanks, Charles.